you so much, uh, uh, so much for joining us and uh, taking some time out. Uh, the rumor has it that all of us have a little more spare time than we usually would have, considering uh, the lockdown situation. Um, but thanks for joining us anyways. I'm going to jump straight into it. Um, Duncan and Bronwyn has only given me 10 to 15 minutes to kind of work through a short insert version of what my talk is about. But once again, thank you so much for joining us. Maybe just a little context, a little background. My name is Kurt. I have been a salesperson my whole life and um, I was hoping to start off with that support group kind of feel over there because I believe there's a lot of salespeople in this group over here as well. So um, I've, I have a, a long history in sales, um, stand-up comedy being the most present one and the one that I believe is the purest form of sales. I've had a t-shirt company before, a printing company at one stage. I've worked in many corporates and um, about Eight years ago, we started the Cape Town Comedy Club in the waterfront that has gone on to do fabulous stuff. Um, as to how I put this talk together, I do lots and lots of corporate stuff, and I find myself in situations where I am a comedian on a bill where there is a keynote speaker, for example, that is delivering a speech. And um, a, lot of the a lot of the time, there are salespeople in there or at conferences and so on, give delivering sales talks or how they want to sell the product. A lot of the time, um, these people are getting it so wrong. And I only say so because I get it wrong too all the time. But I think this is what we're hoping to do here, is take a look at what it is that salespeople do wrong all the time and see how we can improve on this. The reason I say that we get it wrong all the time because I do believe Sales is a lot like playing golf because you're not really playing against the field. You're playing against yourself. And the idea of improving that process over time is what we try to do. It's not a, a, an easy fix to anything. Uh, sales or effective sales is a long-term thing. It's a focus on learning to get to do all of these processes in the correct fashion. Let me jump straight into it. Um, I've got a five-point but that I've put together about what makes stand-up and sales so similar and how one can help the other. And if you're effective sales um, in, in stand-up comedy, stand comedy, this could seriously affect the way you sell your product. Let me jump right into it. The first bullet point is it's all about the prep work. Now you hear this term all the time, the best comedians in the world, they are the guys that can wing it and they can just pull it off at any given stage. Those are the laziest comedians in the world. And I think the same could be said for salespeople. It's all about the prep work. You've got to know what you are stepping into um, before you even get involved with the gig. You, under, you need to understand the demographic in the room, who you're playing to, and how you're going to be playing that room. And it's, you, you hear that all the time. Winging it and, and, and comedy, it's, it's never the same thing. And every word, every pause, every inflection is all planned and prepared ahead of time. And there's nothing worse than death on stage. Nothing worse. It feels like two minutes can feel like a month. Really. And comedians lose careers based on their inability to get that laugh or get that sale on stage. I think the same could be sale, uh, said for salespeople. So never ever get caught unprepared. This is another big problem a lot of salespeople make, and I've done it a lot of the time when I've worked in corporates, is not enough product knowledge. You've got to understand your product inside out, upside down, and all, all the other ways that is possible as well. Because only when you are really well prepared and you know your product really, really well, are you able to negotiate that whole system, play around with all of the facts, loop it around, start it from tail, and then run it to top, do it the other way around, and be able to negotiate all of that and still have a plausible system or plausible sale that makes sense at the end of the day. This is very, very important. And the, the, another big important is, uh, part is, is that most of us don't listen to our audiences. We don't listen to our clients. Now, listening is arguably the most important thing and one of the most important things in sales. Now, I'm going to point that out as a second point, and that is listening. And because until you actually listen to your audience, you really don't know how well you are doing or how well your sale is going. Now, I do understand that stand-up stand -up comedy is a lot about the presentation of a product, which means you are speaking 99% of the time. But there's still an interaction going on between that audience and yourself. It's by far not a monologue. 
It is a conversation and they're feeding you information all the time. So you got to know what's landing, what isn't landing, what's important, what isn't important. And, you know, comedic timing takes two people or more, but two people really, but two entities to understand what comedic timing is. And um, this is another important point. And I'm going to move on to number three on that bullet point is, you know, communicating is very important. We do know that but know when to shut up. This is another big important point I need to point out. And this is one that I've made a mistake with many, many times is overselling my product. Is literally selling the product and then unselling that same product 10 seconds later. And there's something to be said about that. And it all comes down to, and I can defer back to point number one again, is about having good product knowledge and being prepared. And like I said, it's listening to that audience, understanding what they want from it and making sure that you're getting that point across the best way you possibly can. Now, like I said, trying to over explain a point makes you look suspicious as a salesperson. It makes me look weak as a comedian when I'm trying to over explain a gag. This is the same thing. And I've talked my way out of many gags before. And I'm pretty sure you as a salesperson, and I can attest to that, I've spoken myself out of uh, many sales before as well. Here's the fourth point, a bullet point that I find very important is always maintaining a separation from the situation that's going on. I call it the third person philosophy in that if you are like overprepared can be just as dangerous as underprepared because when you're overprepared and you're running through it and you're not engaging with your audience, you're not really listening to them and you haven't, you're literally going to be losing your audience all the time. So you need to be able to take a third person approach to it. So I, as a comedian, need to be in the audience and on stage at the same time. Only then will I be able to see what it is that I'm doing, how the audience is perceiving it and reacting to it, and that'll give me cue as to when or how and what I should use to continue. Sales is pretty much the same thing. You've almost got to be slightly apart from the sale to make it work. You've got to constantly have some, some sort of way of assessing um, whether you are hitting the right marks or not. And maintaining that slight apartness is such an important part of sales and stand-up comedy. The fifth point, and um, I'd like to point this out, is arguably one of the most important, is that this whole process is a journey. It's not really guiding a client by the nose or guiding my audience by the nose, so to speak. It's literally standing next to them and walking that journey with them and making them understand all the little parts that are important too. Um, just to give you an understanding to as to how I would function on stage, there is a formula for likability and you've got to be likable to make a sale. Now, I honestly believe that stand-up comedy is the biggest sales pitch in the world because I am the product. Makes me a little biased, of course, but it also makes me weaker in that I am unable to deliver my material until I'm able to step out of it and see exactly what I'm doing and how the audience is perceiving that. Um, just to give you an idea, I always start off with easy laughs, small ones. Throw little lines into the water and see where that's going and then build that up into something that's a bigger sale or a bigger laugh towards the end. The same thing works with sales. Not everybody's ready for the big gag. You've got to present small little tidbits to lead them along the way to make them understand. Well, it's all about trust then. They need to trust that you are able to do what you say you're going to. And when somebody introduces you as a comedian or a salesperson, you better know how to do that. I mentioned likability at the beginning of the, this bullet point, and that is a formula to this. And this is my take on it. You couldn't possibly sell without being likable. And there's a formula for that. It's, I call it a 30-70 formula, and that is 70% uh, confidence, and you put in 30% humility. Now, if you combine that to just right, you have a nice balance of being able to not take yourself too seriously, but still deliver the product and the service that you need to. That has served me exceptionally well um, over the years. And it's, it, it literally is 
all about getting that client or your audience to trust you. There's one more thing I'd like to add, and that is, ladies and gents, all you need is three good gags. Everyone needs them. It'll get you out of all kinds of trouble. It'll get you out of all kinds of sales pitches. It'll get you into all kinds of sales pitches and into all kinds of deals. I think um, choose three really good gags. And I would like to share maybe one or two with you a bit later on. But right now, um, there's nothing like a good gag to get a deal sealed. I have to write new ones all the time. You guys don't. Choose three that you really dig. And I promise you at the right time, you drop it in the right place, it will disarm anybody and put you way in front of the game. I hope I have not taken up too much of your time. I think we're on to about 14, 15 minutes, give and take a little bit. Um, let's just do a little recap before I wrap that up. And um, in that five um, bullet points, and let's just run through it. The first is all about the prep work, making sure that you prep, making sure that all the little bits is in place. Um, listen to your audience because until you know what they need from you, you can't possibly give them what they need. Less is more. Less is more. Like I said, I talk myself into and out of many deals. Same thing on stage. Less is more. Um, and a four, always be slightly apart. The third person philosophy in that it's best to understand what you are doing when you are able to look at the situation and the sale or even the show from a third person's perspective. And last but not least, trust. And that trust is a journey. It's all about doing it together with the client. Just to give you an idea about that journey and how important it is, I have purchased four cars from the same person based on that fact. Is that he's most probably not the best salesperson in the world, but what he's, he's given me is trust in his ability to serve me with the product that I need, an honest one, and someone, and someone I can trust, and I've purchased four cars from him. I couldn't say it any different than, thank you so much again for joining us. I hope I have, um, I've ticked all the boxes over there with those five bullet points of sale, and stand-up comedy, and uh, sales is not that different at all, and the one can definitely help the other along. These are all short little versions of what um, the talk is daily about. The extended one is uh, about 35, 40 minutes long, depending on what the client needs. But all of those points, um, we'll elaborate on a little more and uh, break that down a little more as we continue. I hope um, I got my point across in 10 minutes. 10 minutes is not a lot of time to, uh, to get um, five of these big points across. Um, and usually um, 10 minutes is, is, is a weird amount of time for me. Usually um, I get nothing less than half an hour. So I, I hope I've, I've, I've got my point across effectively. Maybe you're not, uh, I hope I haven't spoken too fast. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me again. Um, perhaps this is a good opportunity, uh, Duncan, um, if anybody wants to ask some questions. Um, this is a good opportunity to do so. And uh, once again, of course, thank you. I see there's quite a couple of people involved here. I'm blown away. Thanks for joining us.